It's Mom and Pop Video Shop. Welcome right. to Mom and Pop Video Shop. I am Joel, and of course, uh, Tyson. I'm finally getting this correct. Tyson, right here. Yeah, and, man. And as you already know, uh, if you clicked on this video from the thumbnail and from the title, uh, but now you can see with your own eyes, right here in our Brady Bunch-esque design, we've got the one, the only, the king of the B-movies himself, my... My better half, because we have the same name, Joel D. Winecoop. Hey. Hey, man. How are it's you doing, Joel? Tyson so I'll, I'll, and I'll Joel. Applause. How are you? Yeah. Oh, Joel, I always forget your name. Yeah, I know. It's easy to forget my name. Yeah. Yeah. Tyson. <laughs> How you guys yeah. doing? Good, man. How are you? You doing all right? Okay. Sorry. No, it's okay. Doing, Got a yawn. Doing okay. You, usually people yawn a few minutes into our conversation and then they're like, God, these guys are boring. Um, so I think what's funny is you were, so obviously you were on when I, no, retro it's, movie. It's, 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 I bore myself. No, no, you're not boring at all. Um, uh, I believe I, you were on retro movie geek a few times. That was our own audio only podcast, but you were one of our first people ever to be on a video for this channel when we first started doing it. Cause we, the first stuff we ever shot was at Tampa Bay screams last, not this last time, but the time before April of 2023. And we did a little interview with you and you were uh, nice enough to accommodate us with our nonsense. And uh, we always appreciate you. So anytime you have an open invite to the show, of course, but anytime uh, we can promote something you're doing or, or, or whatnot. And you said, I was like, Hey, you got anything going on? You're like, well, as a matter of fact, I do. So uh, what I want to tell people what you're up to. <laughs> well, that's um, first of all, thanks guys. I, I, I do appreciate it. Anytime you guys contact me, it was fun. To always appreciate it and have fun doing this with you guys. And I, I thank you all so um, yeah, it was funny because when, like you said, and I said, when you said, uh, when you said, when I said, when you said, when I said, um, if you got anything coming up in the future, and then I was like, yes, um, Saturday, August 24th, um, I'm going to be at a, I'm going to be doing at We Love Comics in Tampa, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, it's technically it's uh, 10 to 4, I think, but I'm trying to reach out to Charlie and get a hold of him. Oh, what happened? Did I just lose everything? No, you're good. No, you're good. You're good. I, I added I added the uh, graphic to no, the screen. I'm still good. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. put the thing up. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah and that's yeah. where it is because I couldn't remember the address uh, on Cypress Street. <laughs> yes. So yes, I'm gonna be there on August 24th. I got my new comic book came out. It's called Force Nine, and um, <clears throat> I have it in uh, comic book size comic digest size and comic magazine size so you'll have three options nice i have uh force nine t-shirts we have ray blast who is the leader of force nine he's the leader a uh, superhero uh i have force nine pins that you can put a pin on your shirt you know pin it right on there i got uh force nine buttons i have uh ray blast magnets ray blast stickers uh force nine comic book stickers um, I think I said t-shirts, um, all kinds of, uh, force nine and Ray blast, um, comic book items that I'm going to have there. We're also going to have like everything and even 187 times coaster is inside there, but may mostly it's all force nine stuff. We'll have a bag full of stuff. It'll be like 20 or $25, something like that. Um, so good deal. You're getting, you know, um, uh, your money's worth when you buy a bag, you just get it all at once. Or you can buy it separate. It doesn't matter. It's a little cheaper if you buy it in the bag. And then, we, of course, we got the comic book, the magazine, the digest. And I'm going to have a limited amount of my DVDs and Blu-rays. There's a shelf that'll be behind Kathy and I. And about three shelves, and we'll just line our movies up on there. And uh, Tim, who's the owner of We Love Comics, he's been very gracious about this. So he's given me a, a platform to put um, all the comics on, the t-shirts, all that. And then of course the background, what I was saying, I'll put some of my DVDs there. So I'll have my movies there, but I'm basically there to promote the comic book. I'm really trying to push the comic now, but everywhere I go with the comic, I'll always have my movies with me too, in case anybody's like, or maybe they want to get a comic and some movies. So 
I try yeah. to have them both. And then I'll have a live appearance of Ray Blast. He will be appearing there with us, walking around the comic store, kind of hanging out to meet the kids and stuff. If parents want the cool thing and their kids to. Uh, any of my movies that are too graphic, I won't put them up. I'll just put up like my ones that are more family orientated, like Wine Coop Tales you could get by with, Lost Faith, uh, even The Bite. Some of those that aren't as hardcore monster and bloody ish. Yeah. And mainly it's about the comic book. The comic book is family orient orientated. There's no swearing in the comic. There's no nudity in the comic. Um, it's just like. It's like Marvel Comics would have been way back in this, like the 70s, except, you know, it's a glossy paper. Um, and it's my artwork. I don't claim to be a professional artist. Like I had a friend of mine said, uh, and he is a professional artist. I asked him his opinion. And he goes, well, it's not professional. I go, no. I, I said, I, I realize that. I said, but years ago, Jake Estrada told me, he goes, why are you getting an artist to do this comic book? He goes, if it's your comic book, people are going to want to see your artwork. And I agreed with that, but I still, I reached out. I got an artist, but I kind of paid him, but I didn't, he didn't ever did the artwork. He did the cover, which was great, but he didn't do the rest of the book that was, he was supposed to do. So all the time I was kind of bitching and whining about not getting my artwork. I said, I'm just going to start drawing it myself. And I got the book all done and he still hadn't done anything except the cover um, so I just said, forget it, man. I'm going to release it. We'll make a, you know, you still owe me. We'll just make a new deal where you just draw pictures for me for the novel. Cause I'm also doing the novel and I hope to have that done by October. It's also called force nine. Of course, it's bigger than the, the comic book is 80 pages. The mm -hmm. book will be probably around 200, 250 pages. I figure 22, 23 chapters. Um, and again, that book, that's for anybody, young readers. There's no graphic violence. There's no swearing. Um, it's it's kind of like done like the superheroes I liked. And I grew up when when Justice League came out or even the animated, the, uh, we were watching the crisis as part one, part two, and part three. And they got, you know, the actors in there are going, oh, shit. And, and <laughs> oh, that, that ass. And I'm like, I don't like seeing my superheroes swear. I know it's, you know, you want to try and portray it as real life and Wolverine going, ah. Uh, Oh, screw you, Baba. Uh, I'll kick your ass. And and even Lobo, which I, I realize what Lobo is, and that's the way he speaks. And uh, he's even, I'm going to kick his ass. And and I'm just like, oh, we can just leave that out of the comic book world. Um, I know some people want it, but I'm kind of like opposed to it. So for a young reader, they're not going to see that. My heroes don't swear. Um, they say things like, I'm going to kick the crap out of him. And... Uh, and it's kind of kind of cool. Morals are a little morals. I don't I don't know. I don't, don't want to say morals. They're superheroes. They're fighting. And uh, but in the book, they they rely a lot on uh, uh, because they're Force Nine. They're all Christians in the in the superhero group, like all my friends were. And these are all real people that are in uh, in Force Nine, the novel. Uh, my character is Ray Blast. My friend Robert Horton is Alpha. Jimmy Weiss was Tachyon. My wife is Talera. Thomas Analek is Titan. Uh, Blue Star is my nephew, Terry. And this, the kind of sad thing in that part, he passed away uh, in November last year. And I have a tribute in the book to Terry. And then I just finished his um, memorial that his mom is going to be playing at his memorial. Um, but he's in the book. And he, he created Blue Star way back in the 70s. I kind of taught him to the to draw, not that I'm a good drawer, but I like to draw and I taught him how to do it. And then he created his superhero because I had one and he was alive when I told him about it. I go, hey, Terry, I got this going on and Blue Star's in here and Blue Star lives on in the book. And he's like, oh, that's cool, Joel. And, and, uh, but yeah, sadly, uh, uh, in November he passed away. So it's kind of a tribute to him. And, uh, he's in the book, he, the comic book, also in the novel. And uh, yeah, that's what I got going on right now. That's, I mean, I got some movies that are going on too, but mainly I'm kind of pushing the book and, and doing that. And the, the movie I'm working on, Baker Act, that is kind of, it's kind of hit or miss because it's, it, we might shoot this Sunday. We might shoot next Sunday. We might shoot, so it's not my production. It's somebody else's. I'm just the, the, uh, the, the lead role in it. The, uh, the character of Bruce Holmes, that the movie's all around him and him finding his, wife um who's played by uh, my wife kathy and uh 
yeah and then i got a couple other projects beast mode i have to get back and finish that and um i'm doing some uh uh judging for a uh uh septum sin versus awards and also roderick colbert's uh sigmund freud uh mm -hmm. filmmaking so yeah so the the basic thing right now is um is force nine sorry i blab on no 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 that's what what, what is it as, one of the great Judy says, yabba, yabba, yabba. Yeah, the great thing about having joel wine coop on is i i because i you know sometimes i actually i don't have this problem a lot but where you get a guest who doesn't talk as much i like it when my guests talk <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah, because Joel doesn't talk as there much. There you go. Yeah, this Joel, Dyson doesn't has to hear me enough. He does not want to hear from this Joel. That Joel, he's happy to hear from. So a couple of things. One, I think on the flyer that we just looked at, did you said it's going to be from it says 12 noon till four, but you're saying it might be 10 to 4. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, because um, well, there's Charlie Belcher is um, on Fox 13 all the time yep. here I know, in I know um, he yep. Tampa. Yep. And he yep. always goes out and does events and stuff. However, I think that day is the same day as the Tampa Bay Comic Convention. So oh, I will lose okay. a lot to that, but it costs a whole lot more to go to the Tampa Bay Comic Convention yeah. than it does to come see me. Sure. But yeah, that's fair enough. I don't know. But so I put it out there to him anyway. So I'll probably get, even though it says noon to four, I... I'll get with Tim. And then if I do get a response from Charlie, if he would come out with his show for Fox 13, mm -hmm. I would be there. I would show up at eight yeah, and be there prepping. And, and Tim will get us in the store early and okay. Charlie could come in and shoot a segment because that's what he does. He shoots segments between yep. the news. He shoots like four or five throughout. He'll go from like eight in the morning till like 11 ish. And I thought, well, if we could get him there, that'd be kind of cool to get the coverage on television. Um, and if I get an email back from him, Saying yeah, Joel, because like, I I know him as a friend too. He's, he's I've got right now, I've got my Char Charlie's World interview up with him now, and uh, so if he were to say no, I can't make it, then yeah, I'll probably just get there at ten when Tim does. Tim will open the store. We'll get all set up, and if people meanwhile people are coming in, I'll be there early, and okay. then of course we're on from noon to four, and then if things are still going on, like Tim says, he goes, Joel, you're welcome to stay there, you know, till I close the store. So we'll be there if anybody wants to come in and see us. Uh, Kathy, cool. my wife and I, we will be there. Nice. Uh, um, cool. Probably more or less starting at 10 ish because um, I'll mm -hmm. just get there when he opens the store unless we can get Charlie to come, you know, earlier than that. But, you know, and it's a free event. I mean, whatever. <laughs> I'm not big some star status. I'm just a little guy trying to make his mark in the You're world. You're the king of the B movies, out, Joel. A little comic book. <laughs> and... <laughs> You're the king of the B movies. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> but, <laughs> Well, you know, I was next door when um, I was setting that up. I went down to Glenn Papp at his Nerd Out Comics, and there was a lady in there with her her son. And I, I assume the kid was, you know, nine or ten, maybe wanting to get into comics because she said, "Well, you know, how much is this? Is this is this a good comic book to start my son on? It's Batman and Scooby Doo." And Glenn was like, "Well, I don't know if it's going to go on. You know, it might be just be a one four four mm -hmm. comics, and it's done." It's, it said it's a it's a cool book to start him mm -hmm. on. So the kid got that. So I would love it if parents came in with their kids that want to get started reading comic books and and have them pick up a copy of Force Nine because it, it's a fun little story. There's lots of action through the entire story. Um, I think it's a pretty cool story, and um, you know about a group of superheroes coming together, no different than the Avengers or the Justice League, except mine don't swear. <laughs> <laughs> I want, you know, the family to be able to read. Like if a dad wanted to sit down and read comic books to his kids like I used to do, and I'd have to I'd have to skip the part where he goes, I'm going to kick the ass out of you bad guys. It's, they could sit down and read the comic book to their kids, and they're not going to run into any bad words. Yeah, there's fighting, but it's comic book violence. You you don't go back to Roadrunner. There's a ton of violence oh, yeah. in that. Oh, yeah. Lo Looney Tunes there. are great. I, I, so I'm not. But I, mine I is. And there's no nudity. What? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Um, I think what here's the key. I, I I've talked about this before. I was not, I mean, I liked Fantastic Four and Spider-Man as a kid, but I was not like huge into comic books. I, I was more of a mad magazine and cracked kind of kid. But one of the things I think 
I feel like has happened just uh, as a, as a normie on the outside, it seems like they've tried to make comic books mature with the audience. So like, that's why, and, and it's like, they're trying to appeal to, you know, people who are in their forties and fifties who are not kids anymore. But the problem was, I feel like they created this void so for like a little kid, if you want, you know, as a kid, when you want to get into comic books, you'd have to go to the old stuff, right? Because I know with my kids, when they got into comic books, you know, my wife and I were choosy about what they were reading. And so there's certain ones we were quite, as they've gotten older, we've been, you know, much more, you know, lax in that <laughs> department. But when they were really little, we, I took them to free comic book day since they were like five years old. And I remember some of the ones you're giving away. I start looking at them. I'm like, whoa, yeah, I'm not ready to explain what that is. <laughs> so, you know, I have to put them to the side. So I think it's cool that you're doing something that is geared towards kids. And here's the thing. The thing I've always appreciated about you, and I've told you this before, so I'm sorry if I'm you know, beating a dead horse over and over again. But I appreciate and love the fact that you as a creative person don't wait. Like you don't you don't wait for the guy to do the art for you're like, yeah, screw this crap. I'm I could do this, I'm gonna do it, and you just do it and you put it out in the world. And I appreciate and respect that about you legitimately. Like that is the thing I love the most about Joel D. Weinkoop is that he just gets it done and does it himself and does it ask for permission. And I respect the hell out of that. For sure. Oh, thanks, Joel. I, I appreciate that, man. Yeah. I'm kind of like, um, I guess back in the day when Tim and I were doing stuff, you know, in the mm -hmm. late 80s, 90s, um, it was always kind of depending on, oh, who can help me do this? Uh, mm -hmm. Let me put my name out there, see if somebody wants to use me this. Mm -hmm. um, maybe someone will do this for me. Maybe I'll get around the right people and these people will do something for me. These people will do that. And starting out with the movies, Tim, Tim, Tim was doing that because we both wanted to do it. He wanted to be behind the camera. I wanted to be in front of the camera. So it worked good for both. It wasn't just for Tim. It wasn't for both of us. Mm -hmm. um, but then there came a time, you know, Tim moved. And then I was on my own in the acting thing we did together, I think, was Dirty Cop No Donut. Then I actually flew up there to Kentucky in 2001 or two, And um, we did a Monster Man, the Alien. Last thing... We worked together on in Tampa, and my, I started in Fort Pierce, uh, and then I moved to Tampa. When I got to Tampa, the, the movie stuff really opened up because a lot of, as soon as I came over here, a lot of Tampa movie makers were like, hey, man, can you do this? Can you mm -hmm. be in our movie? Mm -hmm. Well, me, I like editing myself, taught myself mm -hmm. how to edit, not the greatest editing you know, package, but it's lower level, but I still taught myself how to do it. And then that's when I just started creating my own move and my own thing. And, and then of course I did some part of New York, like six or seven movies. And then even we kind of went our separate ways because Phil started doing his stuff and I was doing, still doing my stuff. Um, but the one thing that kind of uh, was that I wanted to do was the comic book. So I actually stopped the movie making, I say I stopped the movie making, but I didn't. I just wanted to concentrate on the comic. But as I was doing the comic, movie makers from around the country were still contacting me saying, hey, can you do this cameo? Can you do this? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I got Marcus, my friend, started to do the Baker acted thing. So I'm still doing those things for those individuals out there. But a lot of it, I like to control myself because sometimes involved with this person and this person and then pretty soon everybody's arguing and and then you got to split things three ways and one guy doesn't have money but you got twice the money and somebody else has a camera and then and then it's like suddenly one person's putting up all the money and the other people aren't but then they want to split everything three ways and you're like yeah you did do the camera and, and you look pretty on film but sometimes i'm just like i just i'd rather control it and do it myself Mm -hmm. Not not in a bad way because I treat all my mm -hmm. actors really good. Uh, when we did 187 times, every, I paid everybody, we fed everybody, you know, everybody had a good time on my set. I took care of everybody, and so that and that. But those last months, I just just wanted to do the comic book, and I could have 
got a comic book artist and I could have got a writer and I could have got a, the, the guy mm -hmm. that does the pens and the inks. It would have cost thousands and thousands of dollars. And these independent projects just don't make money back. And so mm -hmm. it's like, even when you, if you have somebody mm -hmm. sign a release or a contract and you're, let's say I say, uh, okay, can you give me $20,000? First thing the guy's going to say, well, what's my pain? It's all in your contract that you lose you can put the money in you can be guaranteed you can there's still and you have to abide by that bad if i made six thousand dollars and still owe this guy you know whatever and he's going hey am i going to get my money and i'm going no man it was in the contract that you might lose that's almost like saying i'm tricking you because mm -hmm. i know this movie ain't going to make five thousand dollars but i'll yeah. take that extra 15 grand i don't feel right like that yeah. it, it's like i see a lot of this on facebook people go on facebook and just say they're just blatant about it they go who wants to help pay my groceries and my rent this month here's my here's my uh here's my 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 money event send send me money so i can pay my rent send me money so i can buy my groceries send me money so i can take my dog to the vet send me money so i can go take my 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 girlfriend that's not my girlfriend i, I want to send her some food I, 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 I always had that thing when people put up their wedding things. I'm like, I, I always told my wife, I go, that's your, she goes, no, she goes, it's not begging you. They're just saying they're situating what they would like to have. If perchance somebody would like to buy them a gift. And I go, but yeah, you're, you're asking. So that was one step. But now I see them on Facebook all the time. They're just like, I don't have any money to pay my rent. Who wants to help me pay my rent this month? Or they'll say, I got to go to Publix and buy groceries. Who wants to send me $400 so I can go get my groceries? And I'm always like, why don't you just go get a job and pay for it like everybody else? Yeah. So at least when I ask for something, I say, buy my comic book. You're, you're getting something immediately. You're purchasing something. Do these people go to Publix, get $400 of groceries up to the checkout? And when the checkout says, okay, that'll be $400, they go... Yeah, I'll just uh, next week and give you 50 bucks. Then after the week after that, I'll give you Then after the week after that, I'll come up and give you 20. No, you go and buy your groceries. You don't barter. Yeah. So I don't ever want to say, send me your money so I can do this. Yeah. I will say, send me your money and get your money's worth. Because give me 50 bucks, I'm going to give you $50 of movies. Uh, uh, buy my comic book. My comic book is $20. Buy, buy I'm not going to say... You know, give me two thousand dollars, and you get this perk of a comic or a, a, a piece of T-shirt or something. I guess it's fine. Just to me, I don't kind of get it. And I see a lot of those fail. They get all this money, and then the thing never comes out. Where did that money go? So you just got mm -hmm. my money for free for doing nothing. Mm -hmm. So if I'm gonna do something, I prefer mm -hmm. to just do it on my own. I don't have to answer to anybody. I don't have to owe anybody. I might just say. Hey, I got this cool thing. Get your name on the movie. You know, send me twenty dollars. At least you're getting something for it. And then, and then when I did that, it wasn't give me your money. It was, you know, uh, buy three of my movies and get a credit. Buy six of my movies, get an executive producer. You know, something like that. And on the comic, I simply say, if you want to buy a kind of kind of cool comic, it's not Marvel, it's not DC. It's the best I could do, but I think it's a fun, enjoyable story. You might enjoy it. Um, you know, buy one from me. So that's kind of how I do my thing. No, no over the top promises of doing whatever. Just, you know, here's my product, buy it. So mm -hmm. yeah, I just push myself to, to do it mm -hmm. on my own. Um, I've had other people that say, Hey, can you, can you do this thing for me for like I did one for uh, Scott Tepperman and Tim Ritter for truth. Five. It was fun. I kind of didn't think about it too much of the way I just explained I kind of did it for them because they, you know, they were like, Joel, you know, it'd be cool. You, your personality, boom, you're jumping. Yeah, you're jumping out there at them and go, come on, it's going to be great. And it gets people to, and they'll send us money to, for the movie. But it's not that I, I got any, I didn't get a dime out of it. You know, I just get because I acted in it, what I got paid yeah. to act in it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's just on me now mm -hmm. to push myself to be able to do the things that I want to do, but I want to be true to everybody i never want to cover up anything or ask for too much you know if, if like i said if, I, if i'm gonna do it it's gonna be like uh 
hey, I'm selling this comic. It's $20. It's not like, give me $1,000 and you get the book. No, it's buy the comic, $20, we're done. Or, yeah. you know, if, if I'm doing a movie, I might do the movie thing again. But it's but it's always like, buy these three movies, get the credit. So, and then you can kind of be more in control of it and you'll get things done. Instead of me waiting on somebody else, hey, everything's done. You get that footage I need? I need that footage to complete the movie. Well, I'm at Aunt Ethel's and, you know, she's having trouble. So I got <laughs> to stay here and help her. I'll just do it myself because this way it gets done. And yeah. if I have to blame anybody, it's myself. I have to go, hey, wine coop, you didn't, you didn't get it done. What happened? Yeah. Um, I'd say everything. There's only one movie, and I never really said, I think I said I was writing the script, and that is Lost Faith 2, but it was so elaborate, so hard to do, and because I want to do everything myself, it makes it hard. Yeah, again, I'd love to collaborate with people, but like I said, then one person might be like, well, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't get started, I failed to do this, and if I just, I know a movie I worked on, Dark Dimensions, and they said, well, we're for the effects guy to put in the dragon i go why did you leave that open don't get the effects guy do it yourself you don't need a dragon trust me and the movie came out without the dragon <laughs> so i just think a lot of times you can do more by yourself than with a bunch of people unless you got 20 30 40 80 thousand dollars to throw into it so you can pay all these other nine people that want to do something yeah. with you and then guaranteed you'll not make that money back and then everybody's going to be bitching about hey man where's my money i should you owe me 20 grand yeah. i'd rather do it myself yeah and then i can just argue with myself well hey, I, I, Paul, where's that yes money? Paul, don't I don't know, man. <laughs> it was hard for me to get what? It was hard for you to get that money. I'm going to kick your ass. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm going to kick your ass. Well, come on, son of a bitch. I'll beat your ass. You're going to beat my ass. I don't think so. I'll whoop your ass. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I want to point out, ladies and, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, that type of language will not be in his comic. I just want to make sure clear. But secondly, uh, when you yelled out, hey, that Joel, I, I, I thought you were talking to me. <laughs> comic book, it's not. Yeah. Oh, uh, I That's want to right. say, Mister Mister Winecoop, you know we love you, and we we love again. You're, you're you're like one of the nicest and coolest guys. Like we every time we've met you in person, and obviously had you on the show, you're always very open with stories and telling us stuff, and it's really cool. So I always give you an open invite back onto the show. Uh, in the meantime, though, I want to make sure everyone knows again, we love comics at. Uh, 3310 West Cypress Street, Suite 203, Tampa, Florida, 33607. Uh, I don't know why you need the zip code, but there it is. And the phone number. We'll go ahead and put all of that in the uh, show description below. So that way anybody wants to see it. It's August, Saturday, the 24th. Uh, technically, it shows it from noon to four, but you're saying you're probably going to be there a little earlier than that. But noon to four is a safe bet. That's uh, probably the best time for people to show up and, and meet you pick up your comics, pick up your movies. Uh, again, Joel's, uh, he, this is this guy right here. Like how he is, this is how he is in person. Like, right. this is him. like you get I, what you see. Yeah. This is one of those where he goes on a show and he puts on an act and then you meet a person. And he's like, ah, screw off kid. I got no time for you. Now this guy is warm and inviting. His wife is awesome. Um, they're, they're both great people. So anyway, on that note, uh, thank you again, Joel for being here. And, uh, is, anything else, you want to you want to say before we sail off into the sunset? Just like, oh, and I got to hear from Tyson. Too. I, I, it's not Tyson's fault. It's my fault. Much, but <laughs> and I want to hear from Tyson. And my, and my fault. Said, Joel and bad Joel. I have time. So I have, my I only... have time for everybody. When I'm, yeah. And my wife. Yeah. My, my wife and um, I, well, anybody comes up to the table, we spend time with them. We talk yep. to them. Um, I'm never like, hey, go away. I got to. Here, I have to count the m ms um, We're always, you know, we'll talk to, you know, people come up. We want to talk. We like meeting everybody. Um, even, the, even the guy that'll come up and go, he'll look at all my stuff. He'll touch every movie. He'll look at everything. And then he'll look at me and he goes, got any Godzilla? And I'll go, no, man, I don't have any Godzilla <laughs> movies. And he'll leave. And he'll come back 35 minutes later. And he'll talk to Kathy. And he'll go. Is that your dad? And Kathy's like, no, that's my husband. Then he'll go away and he'll come back 25 minutes later and he'll look at everything and touch everything again. He'll go, have you got any Godzilla movies? And I'll go, dude, look, man, I'm telling you for the last time, I ain't got no Godzilla movies. <laughs> but I will still talk to him. 
Yes. <laughs> Con yes. Con full. And we have a by and large time great, we're great. events, whether we're doing, you know, little little we do pop-ups downtown or if we do conventions. We always spend time with people. We always always enjoy talking to people and I'll always make deals at our table. I, I always talk to people or you know, or they they buy it, they get they get the DVDs, I'll toss in something for free. And um so and I've been to convention, some of the wrestlers. I walked up and told them that I'd seen from another show, and I go, Hey, how's it going? He goes, Pretty good. Here's my thing. You get this one for 80, you get this one for 80. This this picture's for 80, this one's just for 40 because it's back in the 70s, and this one's for 40, but these are dinner. And I go, Oh man, I go, I go, thank you buddy i just brought you by to meet my son and he just went crossed his arms turned his head and looked up at the sky wouldn't even say hello to my son and uh that really turned me off that you wouldn't talk to my son and you just wanted to sell your pictures yeah be nice be nice to everybody you know someone comes up says hello i do it when we're shopping (laughs) you know uh i'm walking through when we go through Publix and we're picking our groceries if i walk by somebody i go hey how you doing today sir Hey, hon, how are you? And some of them are like, you don't know me. Man, everybody would just be a lot nicer. We wouldn't have any wars. They'd be like, overseas would be like fighting. I want this piece of land. All right, let's play some cards for it. Okay, buddy, you won that piece of land. Have a good day. See you later. <laughs> yeah. We'd have no wars and killing. People yeah. just at the gas station, I open the door for people. Hey, you know, they go in. I go, how are you doing today? And they're like, cool, thanks. How are you today? Good. And everybody's happy. Just be nicer to everyone and that and that's just what i try and do just, just i'm always nice, surprised get along with everybody and uh yeah but tyson what i'm you, always surprised what do you have to say yeah so i'm saying i'm always surprised uh, when we go to cons and shows and you've got uh vendors and artists and creators that you can tell are incredibly introverted you know their their noses are buried in their phone or they're they're drawing something even when people come up you know it's like they're not not that they're even trying to sell. They're just like not engaging with with anybody. And that I I've, I've done a few shows yeah. with books and stuff myself. Well, as a matter of fact, I would not be a proud clerk at the mom and pop video shop had yeah. you know I not gone out and accosted Joel and his and family. It was it was sci- it was sci-fi, sci-fi Bar- Barto. Yeah, sci-fi Barto. We that's when Tyson and I met yeah. year, years ago now. Yeah. But that's the same way, you know. I'm not a carnival oh, barker, cool. but you know, when you when you're a creator and you've you know you're trying to at least get your stuff out there, you know, you gotta you gotta put yourself out there. And that's the thing I noticed with with especially authors, um, the majority are very uncomfortable talking in front of large groups of people and and interacting. It seems like now there are a few exceptions to the rule, of course, but you know that's one thing that I think obviously. Mr. Weinkoop does fantastically is, is he, he has no problem engaging with anybody that comes up to the table and uh, being as loud as he wants to. With yes. Them, so. Yes, indeed. And I appreciate that about, him. uh, are you still there, Joel, or did we lose you? Wait, I, I see something. Oh, there he is. He's back now. Yeah. Okay. So I guess it yeah. runs for so long and then it shuts me off or the camera. Oh, no worry. No worries, man. No worries at all. Uh, anyway, on that note, then I want to thank you again for doing this. Be sure to go to, we love comics on August the 24th. As we record this, I'm going to get this out. This is one of those rare things. Usually <laughs> if somebody's got something going on, the episode goes out. Like at, if we're lucky, the day of, but this is like, we'll have like a, you know, have a good week or two. I think when, by the time this thing drops uh, for people to, to, if they're in the Tampa Bay area, uh, I would highly advise going by and checking out uh, Joel's stuff. So definitely worth doing. So again, Mr. Wycoop, thank you for being here. Uh, and remember at mom and pops, Tyson, our love of. Dirty cop. No donut. Never stops. <laughs>